This is an important piece of fishing tackle, a good accessory. I'm going to show you why in a minute. Welcome back. Do you remember we spoke uh, on the last video about the 101 reels, hardy reels um, and rods we have from Belfast? Well, you've only gone and done it again. We had a call from a gentleman who, sadly, his father passed away. Um, and the family are moving over to the good old US of A. Hello, America. And um, it was decided it was time that this collection of rods was to come out so that it could be used for what it was built for, for fishing. So here we have a collection of 14 meant to brand new Sharps of Aberdeen impregnated cane rods. They run from the featherweight range, which is eight foot six for a five and a six weight, up to the spliced uh, salmon rods, which are very popular still, despite the fact carbons are around, they're very popular for the bigger rivers in uh, Scandinavia, in Scotland, in Ireland, where you can, as a 15 footer, you can literally roll and fire a line out without much effort. Yes, they are slightly heavier, but the action allows you, if you relax, to cast just as far and sometimes further. But what struck me was unusual when I came to do some photography in this, was the difference in the colours of the blanks. If we pick this one up, this is actually, this is mine, it's not in the bundle. This is one I've had for about 10 years. Uh, our good friend and rod builder supremo, Kevin Baines, took it and he's redone the whippings in the original colour. All the rings and guides and everything else are the same and it's come back in a beautiful condition, it would have been new. I use this for carping. But, this is a brand new Scotty nine foot spinning rod. Look at the color change. This is a brand new featherweight rod. Look at the color difference. So that got me thinking, why are they different colors? Is the cane different color? Could be. So after some research on the Sharps website, I'll put this down in case, in case I break it. Um, I find out that because the rods are impregnated with a resin, which is a fairly recent um, uh, progression, if you like, after the war, prior to the uh, Second World War, all of these sharps rods were varnished. Now, what would happen is you get a chip in a varnish, there'd be water ingress, and that would affect the bonding of the six pieces. So, in effect, the six pieces may eventually split. The impregnated rods um, of today are different. They have sharps have never had one back where they have delaminated and come to piece, come to come come to bits. Yeah, me. It's one of those days today. So I start reading it and it turns out that because these are dipped, we'll look at this one for a moment. Because these are dipped in a bath of resin and the dipping process can take hours to days, resin impregnates itself into the fibres of the cane. So whilst the cane may initially be the same colour between the two rods, and if you look at this again, depending on how fibrous the material is and how susceptible it is to sucking in the varnish, if you like, or the resin, it changes colour. It slightly changes the action as well, and the rod becomes marginally heavier. It doesn't matter on the big salmon rods, it actually it's in their favour. It gives them a more steely feel. But on the smaller rods, it retains a likeness. So these 14 rods are going to go on um, after the video. So if you're watching this in early March, you'll see them listed. Is a range from eight foot six right through to I think 15 foot. They're all, as I say, meant to brand new, never used. The tape we spoke of earlier is to do with this. This is one of the splice joint rods, which is a long taper um, that's been cut down after the rod has been built. That taper is impregnated as well. So the flat surface, which this joint protector peg sits on, is impregnated. So even though it looks like a raw surface when you take the peg off, it isn't. The pegs are handy because when you're storing them, you don't chip the end of the splicing here and cause any damage. So even if you lose the pegs and don't have them, get your craft saw out and, and somebody's, somebody's peg for hanging clothing or something, you can easily make a peg. The main thing is keep it protected. However, how do you attach two joints together, which are this, in days gone by, when you had a Grant's vibration made a green heart and you had the same principle, splice joints, you would take the pegs off, there would be a leather binding and you would bind on the outside of the rod, you would bind the joint together. So it would look like that. Modern technology, of course, has invented the black tape. 
And all you simply do is put the joints together, run the tape up. It doesn't have any flat spot. The rod will continue in a pure parabolic curve. And when you're finished, undo the tape and pop it in your box. That's why every collection we buy, whether a sharp rod, sharps rods, you'll always find a roll of sticky tape. So sharps rods, great value, a unique little collection, fly fishing and one spinning rod. I'm so tempted to keep this, but I can't keep everything. Well, I can try, I suppose. This is amazing. It is a salmon spinning rod. I would use it for carp and I would happily use it for pike. It's absolutely beautiful, brand new. There's only one of those. So come back and have a check um, of the stock. Next video, uh, we're going to meet a good friend, Peter Cockrell down at Diva Springs. And we're going to chat about the fly time cabinet that we have here from the late Gary Brooker. We're taking it down so that Peter can talk about his friend, Gary, Eric Clapton and all the rock and roll lifestyle that he leads and I'll tell you the thought of it it's just it's turned me a white shade of pale see what I've done there